Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Say, I want to thank the Honourable Member for asking this question. First of all, Mr. Speaker, say, I want to respond to some of the um, uh, statements and comments made in Parliament yesterday by Honourable Kurindani and Honourable Biman Prasad in response to my ministerial statement. Mr. Speaker, say, Honourable Kurindani, as usual, you know, was all over the place, you know, and asking why one, uh, why was the you know allocation for. Uh, Cold storage facility at Kavanasau and uh, Nukulo in Ba was not provided for. Mr. Speaker said it won't be provided for. Well, let me explain, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said we've got three cold storage facilities constructed uh, at the expense of the ministry lying idle. In Kayasi, the cold storage facility is lying idle, functioning well, waiting for people to grow horticultural crops and store it there. Joe's farm was collecting it from there. And Joe's farm got frustrated that they go all the way up and they don't find anything or sometimes nothing. Mr. Speaker said, you go to KSC now, you'll find this cold storage facility, 45,000, uh, the facility is there. There are two cold storage facilities in, uh, in uh, Nadudulavu station in, in Singatoka, again lying idle, sometimes only is used because farmers have their own. Mr. Speaker say, what is the function of a cold storage facility? When you have fresh produce, when you have fresh produce, if you can't get it to the market, then you want to store it. You want to delay, uh, the, the, delay the, the, the process of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, that will uh, no, worsen the quality of the particular fresh produce. It's perishable in nature. So Mr. Speaker said, Kavanangasau is about three kilometers from the Sengotoka market. Nukuloa, ba, Nukuloa, Nukuloa is about you know, three, two kilometers, Tassil Road, from Bar Market. Why do we need a cold storage facility there, Mr. Speaker said. Instead, we are assisting... That's your plan. Instead, don't ask... I mean, it's not there in the budget, you should have asked me, Mr. Speaker said. So instead, what we are doing is, we are assisting the middlemen and exporters to develop their cold storage facility with a one third, two third basis because they collect the produce, the speaker said. So, cold storage facility is the last resort if you are not able to get your produce to the market, Mr. Speaker said. And there's a lot of problems when you have this facility on a communal basis. People are not looking after, people are not paying the due, etc. Mr. Speaker said, Honorable Biman Prasad, as usual, didn't do his homework, came up with wrong numbers, wrong figures, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, Honorable Biman Prasad yesterday yeah. said that, uh, you know, they are uh, 71,163 households. Totally incorrect. Answer the question. He hasn't, you know, the problem is, problem is, Mr. Speaker said, I said it last week, in the last sitting as well, they didn't bother to read the census report, which will be in the table in Parliament tomorrow, which is available from last four weeks you know, a soft copy on our homepage, Mr. Speaker said. You should have, you should have got the right number. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker said, Mr. Prasad said that 93% of the farmers in Fiji are subsistence. Mr. Speaker said, you, what's wrong with him? How can you have 93% of the farmers in Fiji subsistence farmers, Mr. Speaker said? He's talking about 1950s or 1940s, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, 2009 agriculture census, 80% was subsistence. 2017 population census, 65% was subsistence farmers. 2020 agriculture census, 59.9% are subsistence farmers. Mr. Speaker. Where did they get this 93% from the newspaper article, Mr. Speaker? Said? That's the kind of that's the kind of contribution someone who says he's a professor of economics wants to make in this house. I'm embarrassed, Mr. Speaker. Honestly, I'm embarrassed, Mr. Speaker. Said. Mr. Speaker said, this is the kind of contribution we get from people like you know, Honorable Prasad, not only on agriculture matters, but also on other matters, other subject areas, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, I want to make this uh, statement here, that when academics speak in public, people look upon them because they are qualified, they're supposed to have done research and publication, they're supposed to develop a uh, I, I, uh, uh, knowledge, Mr. Speaker say, it's academics, it's researchers who are supposed to develop new knowledge, Mr. Speaker say. 
And when they speak, they must speak with responsibility, Mr. Speaker said, because they will sway public opinion. They should not make willy-nilly statements, Mr. Speaker said, without doing star as a sage. Mr. Speaker said they could have, they could have got the census report. They were harping about it. Where is the census report? Where is the census report, Mr. Speaker said. Go to a home page and download it. Go to a home page and download it. Go to a home page and download it, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, Mr. Speaker said, um, Order. Mr. Speaker said, look at our dress code. Is this Order. parliament? This Order. is not a flea market? This is not a flea market? Order. Order. Honorable Speaker, point of order. order. Point of order, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Member needs to withdraw that comment. It's totally unparliamentary and offensive. He's not the Speaker of the House, Honorable Speaker, and if he has an issue, he writes to the Who's Honorable that? Speaker. That is, that is very shameful. That is a misogynist comment, and he should withdraw it. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Bully. Well, what's the Honorable Attorney General laughing at? Okay, I withdraw. You are, you are condoning what your draw. member has spoken. Shame on you. I withdraw. I don't, don't talk amongst yourself. Through the Speaker, if you're going to criticize someone, Criticize them through the speaker. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Honorable. Thank you, sir. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Well, the speaker said, let me get to the subsequent question here, Mr. Speaker said. The speaker said, Mr. Speaker said, with the second round of COVID 19, farmers were requesting that on the other side of the border that we need to buy agricultural input, particularly fertilizer and pesticide. And they were not able to get to the, uh, uh, the outlets in town. Some of the outlets were not open, and those who were open were charging exorbitant prices, Mr. Speaker said. And as you, saw, as you know, Mr. Speaker said, we had kept agriculture moving. We, have, we kept containers moving so that our exports will continue and bring in foreign, foreign currency, Mr. Speaker said. And in fact, in fact, last year, we raised exports by 25%, Mr. Speaker said, in, in, in dollar terms, Mr. Speaker said and 16% in actual volume, Mr. Speaker said. And we were on the ground despite the crisis, Mr. Speaker, observing all the protocols of Ministry of Health, were on the ground facilitating production, supply, and exports, Mr. Speaker said. So we did not want that particular process to be affected, Mr. Speaker said, just because they didn't have fertilizer, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, we organized the transportation of 103,000 um, uh, 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 103 tons of uh, fertilizer uh, to the farmers, Mr. Speaker said, at X factory price, Mr. Speaker said, 30% less than what they would pay to the, to the hardware shops and to the other outlets which, would provide, which were providing fertilizer and pesticide, Mr. Speaker said. Mr. Speaker said, it was not a simple operation, Mr. Speaker said. We had mobilized about, uh, about 40 staff, Mr. Speaker said. We utilized our own ministry's truck. We, sp uh, trucks. we spent about $8,000, our own you know, fuel and uh, all the expenses, Mr. Speaker said, to cart fertilizer from Lotoka right to the interior of you know, Naitasiri, Tailevu, etc., Mr. Speaker said, so that farmers there are able to uh, get it. Mr. Speaker said, so uh, what we did was we took the orders and then we gave it the orders to the fertilizer company. We picked up, we delivered it at expected price, and then collected the money and gave it back to them, Mr. Speaker said. So we basically uh, facilitated this, and farmers were very happy. We did it three times, Mr. Speaker said. We're looking at you know, uh, doing it on a quarterly basis so that you know, farmers are able to get this. And it's becoming, uh, it's called Operation West Cross, Mr. Speaker said. And this operation is becoming very popular. And uh, we would want to continue to support our farmers with respect to getting inputs on time, Mr. Speaker said. This is in addition, Mr. Speaker said, to the organic fertilizer that we are uh, delivering at no cost to the farmers in the interior. Thank you, Mr. Speaker said.